Hey guys, in this video, we are going to learn how to build and host a WordPress website from scratch. Now, before we do that, let's talk about WordPress. WordPress is a content management system that helps you build websites without you having to write code. Now, let's start the process of building our WordPress website. For you to follow along in this course, you'd need to buy a domain name and a hosting plan. Now, if you don't see the need or you don't have the money to buy a domain name and a hosting plan, I have the link to another video in the description where I'll show you how to build a WordPress website without you having to buy a domain name and a hosting plan. Now, for those of us who are absolute beginners, a domain name is www.anything.com and a hosting plan is you paying a hosting company for space to keep all the data you would have on your website. Now, to buy a domain name is pretty easy. Just go over to the website of any hosting company out there. Now, there are lots of them. There is HostGator, there is Crazy Domains, Crazy Domains, and there is Hugo Host. Now, go to any of their websites and purchase a domain name first, then a hosting plan for that domain name. So, let's see. So, let's go over to Crazy Domains to see how to purchase a domain name. So, let's say crazydomains.com. Now, if you come over here, come here in the search bar and type in the domain name you have in mind. So, let's say I want to have a website where I sell shoes. And in my mind, I say I want the domain name to be buyshoes.com. I would come here and I'll type in buyshoes.com. Now, the www dot is already here for us. So, I'll type in buyshoes.com to make it www.buyshoes.com. Now, this is the domain name I have in mind. I'll type it in and I'll click on the search button here. Now, what I am doing here is I am searching for the availability of that domain name that I have in mind. And what this means is that I am trying to check if someone else doesn't have this domain name. And that's because domain names are unique. You can't have two faces facebook.com you can't have to youtube.com you can't have to google.com it's just one facebook.com in the whole world so any domain name you have in mind has to be a unique domain name so as you can see here we have this message that says sorry your domain name is registered this means that someone else has this domain name in this case what i'm going to do is i would say to myself okay how can i modify this domain name to make it unique You'd come here, click on search again, and I'd say, let's try buy shoes from nigeria.com. And let's wait for the message here. So, as you can see here, we don't have any error message telling us the domain is registered. Rather, what we have here is the price for this domain name. And we have this add to cart option here, which means we can go ahead to purchase this domain name, which is buy shoes from nigeria.com. So, I'd click on add to cart. When I click on add to cart, I would come here and click on go to cart. When I click on go to cart, then I'll pay for my domain name. Now, after buying your domain name, you will need to buy a hosting plan for that domain name. So I would come here, put my mouse on top of hosting. And when I keep my mouse on top of hosting, I would click on web hosting. Now, when you click on web hosting, you'd scroll down and pick a hosting plan. Now, I would advise you to go for the unlimited plan. And the reason is because with this plan, your website will always load fast. Now, what we have here is we have the duration for any hosting plan that you select here. Now, currently, it's set to 10 years, which means that if I click on buy now on any of these plans, I would have a valid hosting plan for 10 years. Now, if I come here and I select one year, you'd see that the prices increase. When I select two years, the prices decrease. When I select three years, the prices decrease further. Now, when I select 10 years, you see how cheap it is. Now, you go ahead and choose anyone that's suitable for you. Then click on buy now. When you click on buy now, you'd come here and click on I have a domain name. And that's because you just purchased a domain name some minutes ago, right? So come in here and type in the domain name. In my case, it's buyshoesfromnigeria.com. And after you type that in, click on continue. Go ahead and 
pay for your hosting plan. Now, when you pay for your hosting plan, the hosting company, which is Crazy Domains in this case, will send you an email that contains your hosting details. Now, in that email, you are going to have three important items there. The first item will be a link to your cPanel. The second item will be your username to your cPanel. And the last item will be the password to your cPanel. So if you have successfully purchased a domain name and a hosting plan, let's go ahead and start building our WordPress website. But before we do that, I want to mention that I already purchased a domain name and a hosting plan for this course. And my domain name is handlers.com. So wherever you see me typing handlers.com in this lesson, it's my domain name. So let's go over to set up our WordPress website. The first thing to do is to go to that email that was sent to you by the hosting company, the email that contains these three items. Now go to that email and click on the link to your cPanel. And when you click on that link, you'd be taken to a page that looks just like this. Now, this is the login page to your cPanel. Over here, you type in the username that was sent to you by the hosting company. In my case, it's handler C. And you type in the password that was sent to you by the hosting company. I'll type mine in. When you are done, click on login. Here we are in our cPanel. Now, the cPanel may have a different design in your case but the functionality is the same all you need to understand is the cpanel is categorized now we have a category of email here we have a category of files here we have a category of databases we have a category of domains down to the category of Softaculous apps installer. Now, no matter how your own cPanel is designed, check it out and find where the files category is located and the databases category. Now, these two categories are the most important categories for this lesson. And just to mention, these categories are collapsible, all of them. Over here, if I click on the minus sign there, it's going to collapse. When I click on the plus sign, it's going to expand just like this. So the first thing to do here is to install WordPress in our cPanel. How do we do that? Let's go over to the WordPress website, which is wordpress.org. When you come here, click on get WordPress. When you click on get WordPress, you scroll down to this point where you have download WordPress. You click there and WordPress will start downloading to your computer. Now, when the download is complete, Come back to your cPanel and look for the files category. Now, in the files category, you'd have this file manager here. Now, click on the files manager. When you click on it, another tab will be launched in your browser. Now, if you don't understand what a tab is, a tab is when I click on this plus sign, a new tab is opened. When I click again, another tab is opened. If I want to close this tab, I would come here, click on the X sign and I'll close the tab. So when you click on file manager, a new tab will be opened. Now, when you come here in the file manager tab, on the left side, you would see a folder called public underscore HTML. Now click on that folder. When you click on that folder, you would have this page here, say this directory is empty. Now in your case, it may not be empty. Now what you should do, is to delete everything you met there in the public underscore HTML folder. Now, in case you are having a hard time deleting the files that you meet here, I would create a file now inside the public underscore HTML folder just to show you how to delete a file inside the public underscore HTML folder. Now, let me create the file. Okay, so I have a file called file.php inside the public underscore HTML folder. Now to confirm that we are in the public underscore HTML folder still, come here on the left side and click on the folder. Now when I click on the folder, you would see my file.php. So I'm going to show you how to delete files in the public underscore HTML folder. So to delete this file, I would come here, keep my mouse on top of file.php. I would click on it to select it. After I select it, I would right click on it and I would click on delete. Then finally click on confirm. 
and the file is deleted. So that's how to delete files inside the folder. Go ahead and delete all the file that you met in the folder till you have this message that says this directory is empty. Now, the next thing to do is to upload the WordPress zip file that we just downloaded from wordpress.org. So go back to the file manager. Make sure public underscore HTML is selected. Now, how do you know it's selected? As you can see here, the word public underscore HTML is bolder than all of these ones here. That means this one is selected. So while it is selected, click on upload. When you click on upload, another tab will be opened. In that tab, click on select file. When you click on select file, now go to your downloads folder where the WordPress file was downloaded to, select the WordPress zip folder that we downloaded and click on open. Now, when you click on open, it's going to be uploaded to the file manager. Let's wait for the upload to be complete. Now, when the upload is complete, come here and click on this link that says go back to. When you click on that link, you'll be taken back to the file manager. Now, you would see a WordPress zip folder right inside the public underscore html folder now to confirm that it's right inside the public underscore html folder come back here once more on the left side and click on public underscore html when you click on the folder you would see the wordpress zip folder inside it the next thing we are going to do is to unzip the zip folder so to do that click on the zip folder to select it, right click on it and click on extract. Then finally click on extract file. And that's all. Click on close. Now we have our WordPress zip folder and the unzipped WordPress folder. Now we don't have need for the zip folder anymore. So we are going to delete it. I'll right click on it and delete it. Now come here in the unzipped WordPress folder, double click on it to see everything inside of it. Now select everything inside this folder by clicking on the first subfolder there, holding your shift key and using your down arrow key just like this. Make sure everything is selected. When you are sure that everything is selected, take your hands off the shift key and the arrow key right click on the selection and click on move when you click on move this little window is going to come out now bring your mouse here and place it inside this bar here then use your backspace key to delete the word wordpress just the word wordpress now when you have taken out the word wordpress click on move files and that's that now come here and click on up one level. When you click on up one level, you are going to see all the files that we just moved. Now all these files were moved to stay directly under the public underscore HTML folder. Click on this unzipped WordPress folder. Click on it, right click on it and delete it because it's no more useful to us. Now, if you find any step to this point confusing, say it in the comment section and I'll be there to respond immediately. The next thing to do is to configure a database for our WordPress website. Now, let's go ahead and do that. Close the file manager tab and close this tab so that we don't get a messy work environment. Now, come here in the main C panel, scroll down, to the databases category. When you find yourself here, click on my SQL databases. When you click on my SQL databases, you'd be taken to this page. Now in this page, we are going to create a database, create a database user and assign the database user to be the administrator of the database that we created. So first things first, let's create our database. So come here to create a new database. I'll type in the name of my database. In my case, I would call it handlers. Go ahead and give yours whichever name you feel like giving it. So I would say handlers. Now, when you type in the name that you want here, click on create database. Then you would see this message that says added the database handler C underscore handlers. Now handler C underscore handlers is the name of our database. So I would copy this without the quotation mark, come to my notepad and I'll paste it here in my notepad, database name, and I'll paste that. Now we have created a database. Click on go back. The next thing to do is to create a user for our database because every database 
is supposed to have an administrator. So I would scroll down to this point where I have add new user under my SQL users. Now this is where we are going to create our user. You would enter the username for the user. Mine is Joseph. Go ahead and use any username you are comfortable with. After that, create a password for the user. After entering the password, click on create user here. When you click on create user, you would have this message that says you have successfully created a MySQL user named handler C underscore Joseph. Now copy that, come here and say database user. Now database password, mine is Joseph Brendan. Now let's click on go back to go back to a database page. Now we have created a database and we have created a user. But the computer is not smart enough to understand that this user that we just created is supposed to manage that database that we created. It's our duty to assign a user to a database. Now we are going to do that in a second. Scroll down to this point where you have add user to database. Now over here we have this drop down. When you click on the drop down, you would see all the users that you have created. In this case, we only have one user created, which is handler C underscore Joseph. So select that user and select the database that you want the user to manage. So in this case, the database name is handler C underscore handlers. That's the only database we have created so far. So after that, I would click on add. Now, when you click on add, you'd be taken to this page where you would assign privileges to the user. Now, click on all privileges. Come down here and click on make changes. Now, when you have this success message, it means everything is successful. So go back by clicking on go back here. Now we are back to our database page. Now let's go back to our cPanel homepage. To do that, come here, click on this icon here. This is the home icon. Click on it and you'll be taken back to the homepage. Finally, before we proceed, let's make sure that our WordPress website is running on a current and a stable version of PHP. The reason for that is because WordPress is a software written in PHP and PHP is a programming language. So since WordPress is a PHP software, we need to make sure that the software is using the current and a stable version of the programming language. So let's come down here under software in the software category, click on select PHP version and you would see this. Now in this field that says current PHP version, you see that we are currently running on PHP 7.4. Now click on it to see other versions here. Now we have an 8.0 version, which is the latest. Now you can select 8.0 or you can keep it at 7.4, it's still fine. But make sure you don't go below 7.3. So that's that for all the configurations that we need on our cPanel. Let's go back to the home page of our cPanel. I would come here in the browser, I would open a new tab, and in this tab, I would type in my domain name. In your case, type in your own domain name. I would say handlers.com, and I would hit the enter key on my keyboard, just like this. Now, when you do that, you'd have the WordPress setup here. Now, over here, I would select my language and I would go with English United States. I would click on continue. Now, it says, welcome to WordPress. Before getting started, we need some information on the database. You will need to know the following items before proceeding. And the items are your database name. We have that. Your database username. We have that. Your database password. We have that. Now, number four and number five, we don't need to have that. So click on let's go. When you click on let's go, we are going to need to enter our database name. I would copy that here and I would paste it in here. We are going to enter our database username after that. And we have that. I would paste it in here. And the password is Joseph Brendan. I would copy that and I would paste it here. And the database host, leave it like this. The table prefix is okay like this. Click on submit. When you click on submit, you would have this message that says you've made it through this part of the installation. WordPress can now communicate with your database. If you are ready, time now to run the installation. So click on run the installation. Now in this form, I would say my site title is handlers. Call yours whatever you want to call it. Now for my username, I would say it's handlers also. Take note, this is lowercase h. 
Now, I would come here in my notepad. I would take note of this stage also. Now, this stage, you'd call it WP details, which means WordPress details. Now, I would say my username is handlers and my password and my password. I would come here and I would copy the suggested password, which is very strong, and I would paste it here. And for email, I would say info at handlers.com. Make sure you pass in a working email. And that's because this is the email you'd use to reset your password just in case you forget your password. Now for the search engine visibility, I would leave it like this and I would click on install WordPress. Now it says success. WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. Now click on the login button here to log in to your WordPress dashboard. Now at this stage, I'd like to say that whenever you want to make changes to your WordPress website, just go to handlers.com forward slash WP dash admin, just like this, then hit enter. You'd be taken to this same page where you need to enter your username and your password. So let's pass in our username and our password. The username is handlers. That's easy to memorize. The password is not easy to memorize. So I'm going to copy that. I would come here and I would say handlers. And for the password, I'll pass that in and click on login. And welcome to our WordPress dashboard. So let's see our WordPress website. Open a new tab. Type in the name of your domain and hit enter. Now this is my WordPress website not looking really good for now. So we are going to see how to customize and design our website to look very professional. So we are going to do that on our WordPress dashboard. So go back to this tab, which is our WordPress dashboard. We are going to leave this one here. Now this tab will be the tab that we are going to use to test all the changes that we make here in our dashboard. So when we make any change here, we are going to come here in our website and we are going to reload it to see the change as simple as that so let's come back to our dashboard hover on appearance just put your mouse on appearance here and you'd see all these options the first thing we are going to do is to install a wordpress theme now click on themes here when you click on themes you'd see that we have three themes here one of the themes is the active theme and it's the 2021 theme we have 2019 here and we have 2020. So let's delete these two themes here because they are not active and we don't want them. We want to install a better theme for our website. So I would click on this, come down here. I would see a delete button. I would click on the delete button and I would click on OK. And that's gone. I would click on this one and I would delete it also. And I would be left with the 2021 theme. You see it says current theme here. I would bring my mouse here, keep it on dashboard and I would click on home. When I click on home, I'll be taken back to the home page, to the home page of my dashboard, which is this. And I'll bring my mouse once more on top of appearance and I'll click on themes again. I'm just doing this so that you don't get lost in the process. Now, when I click on themes, I would click on add new here. Now, that's because I want to add a new theme to our WordPress website. When I click on add new, I would see all of this. Now, there are lots of good WordPress themes to use out there. But in this video, we are going to focus on just one theme, which is the Zakra theme. So come here in this search bar, type in Zakra. When you type in Zakra, you'd see the Zakra theme show up here. Now bring your mouse on top of it and click on install to install the Zakra theme to your WordPress website. Now when you click on install, the installation is going to start. Now when the installation is complete, you'd see an activate button there. Now you'd click on activate to activate the Zakra theme for your website. Now, let me point this out. Just because a theme is installed does not mean that the theme is active. You have to install and activate a theme for the theme to be the active theme on your website. So I would click on activate here to activate the Zakra theme. Now, when you click on activate, you would see this page come out. Now, click on get started with Zakra. When you click on get started with Zakra, you would be taken to a demo template page. Now, this page is where you would select a template for your WordPress website. Now, all of these templates that have the premium tag are not free templates. They are all paid templates. Now, the ones without the tags are for free. You can use any of that without any issue. So scroll down. And when I scroll down, I would select a template here. Let's say the lawyer template. 
Now, when you have settled for this one, just click on import. When you click on import, you'd have this message here. Click on confirm. When you click on confirm, your demo template will be imported into your WordPress website. Now, when the importation or the installation is complete, we are going to come over here in our website and see the changes for ourselves. Now, let's wait for the installation or the importation to be complete. It's still installing. Okay. Our demo template has been successfully imported to our WordPress website. So let's go back to our website in this tab here and let's reload it to see what we have. So here is our website now and we have all of this without writing any code. The only thing you would have to do when you have a template like this is to change the colors, the pictures, the content of the template to suit your own brand or your own business. That's all. So let's see how to customize this demo template to suit our own business or our own brand. So I'll come back here in the dashboard. I'll scroll up to this point and I'll hover my mouse on dashboard and click on home to go back to the home page of our dashboard. Now, the next thing to do is to hover on appearance and click on customize. When I click on customize, I'll be taken to this page here and over here in this page, I'll start by customizing this section of our website down to this section of our website. So how do we do that? Let's come here. Click on header here. When you click on header, you would click on site identity. Now, when you click on site identity, you would see that we have the first category here, which is the logo category, which is this one. So I can change this logo by clicking on change logo here. Now, when I click on change logo, I would have the option of uploading my logo from my computer into my WordPress website or using any logo I have in my WordPress media library. Now, for me, I don't have any logo on my computer, so I'm going to work with one of these logos here. So I would click on this one to select it and I would click on select. Now, when I click on select, I would crop it. Now, to crop it, I'll come here, I would have this like that and I would click on crop image. When I click on crop image, you'd see that the logo has been changed. Now, that's for the logo category. We have another category here called the site icon category. Now, the site icon is this green circle here. So, I'm going to change that to my own brand icon and I would click on change image. Now, when I click on change image, I would have the same option to upload from my computer or use any image I have in my WordPress media library. So I'm going to use my logo. I would click on it to select it and I would click on select. Then I would click on crop image. And that's that. As you can see here, it has changed. Now I'll scroll down to the next category, which is the site title category. I'll change the content to handlers you can change it to the name of your own company or your own website and i'll change the tagline to handlers also you can change it to your own company or the name of your website so as you can see we have handlers as a site title and handlers as our tagline now we have this checkbox here that's saying display site title and tagline now this is where it's been displayed and i don't like that so i would uncheck that that's going to take us to the next category, which is the typography category. Now, for the site title, I'll change this to Poppins. And for the site tagline, I'll change it also to Poppins, just like that. So after making all these changes, I would click on publish to publish all our changes to our WordPress website. Now, make sure you always click on publish to publish your changes. Now, when I click on publish, I would go back to this tab here where we are using to view our website and I would reload it to see the changes. So as you can see, the change is evident here in our head section, which is this section here. You can see handlers here and you can see our logo here also. Now, let's continue customizing our website. Let's go back to our dashboard. When you come back here, you would see this icon here that indicates going back and you would see this X icon here. Now, this icon is to take you back by one step. And this here is to take you back to the home page of the dashboard, not the customized dashboard, the main WordPress dashboard. So let's click on this icon here to take us back by one step. And here we are. So we have another item here, which is the header media. We don't want to do anything with that. 
we have another one here which is the header top bar now the header top bar is this section where we have this email this phone number and these social media icons so i would come here in the header top bar we have our first category which is enable header top bar it's a toggle button if i turn it off you'd see that we don't have any header top bar anymore now if i turn it on you'd see that we have a header top bar now so whichever one you want you go for it now after that we have another category here which, which is the left content category this means that this category controls everything on the left side of the header top bar and what do we have on the left side we have this email and this phone number and this is it right here so i can edit the phone number here make that 444 make that 022 and i can make this plus 234 just like that now over here i can change the email to info at handlers.com and that's that for this category now let's move over to the next category which is the right content category and what's on the right side of the header top bar it's all of these social media icons now let's say i don't want all of them i would come here in this drop down i would click on it and i would select none now as you can see all of the icons have disappeared so we have another category here which is the text category when i click on this icon here you would see that we can change the color from white to whichever color we want but i like it to be white and we have the background category here if we click on this icon you would see that we can change the background color here so i would click on select color and i would make this completely black not a dark shade so i'll grab this circle here and i'll bring it to this point to make the background completely black so i'll click on this x sign to close that and that's all for the header top bar so i would click on publish to publish my changes and i would click on this icon to go back by one step and over here we have the header main area now the header main area is this section right under the header top bar so we have the first category which is the style category just leave it like that we have the next category which is the search category and under that category we have the option to enable the search icon so currently it's turned off if i turn it on you would see that we are going to have a search icon around here and that's it but i don't want that so i'll turn it off now the next category is the colors category now the background color currently is white but i want the background color to be as black as the background color of the header top bar so that it can be consistent so i would click on select color under background color and i would grab this circle to this point to make it completely black just like that now we have background image under colors but i don't want a background image so let's move over to the next category which is the border bottom category now the border bottom category controls this little line that you have here under the header main area now we can increase the size of that line from one to four to see how big it's going to look like now this is it it's now evident and we can select the color for that line by clicking on select color here and let's use this shade of yellow you can see that it's more evident now and that's that so if you are okay with this click on publish to publish your changes as simple as that now scroll up and click on this icon to go back by one step now let's click on header button now the header button is this button here it's in the header main area so that's why it's called the header button so i would click on header button and you can see the text of the button here is request a consultation but i can change this to learn more you can change it to anything at all and after this button text category which i just changed to learn more we have another category called the button link category now inside this field here you would pass in any link you want the users to go to when they click on learn more take out the hash sign before you paste the link now if you don't have any link to paste there just put back the hash sign there now that's that and don't forget to note that under the button link we have a toggle option that says open link in a new tab currently it's turned on that means that if users click on learn more a new tab will be launched in their browser
The next category here is the dimensions category. Now, all of these numbers are perfect for me. You can mess around with the numbers to see how it looks like. Let's move over to the next category, which is the colors category. Now, for the colors category, we have the text color and the background color. Let's see what's what for the text color. Click on this icon in front of text color. So you can see that we have two options for the text color. We have normal and hover. Professionally, it's called state. Professionally, I would say we have two states for the text color, the normal state and the hover state. The normal state is when the text is just there. The hover state is when you place your mouse on top the text without clicking it actually. So for the normal state, the text color of our button is white. And for the hover state, let's click on hover, the text color is white still. And that's fine by me. Now for the background color, if I click on this icon in front of background color, you'd see that we have two states also, the normal state and the hover state. Now when I click on select color and I scroll down, let me choose this shade of yellow for the normal state. You see that it has been updated there. But when I put my mouse on top of the button, you'd notice that the color is changing. So let's come here, click on hover to select a background color for the button when a user hovers on the button so let's click here let's have a shade of green here and you'd see that when i keep my mouse on top of the button it changes to green now that's all for the colors category over here we have another category called the border category and under that category we have the roundness setting here currently our button is square shaped but if you want the button to look round just come here and type in 22 and you see the button is round kind of if you want it like this, fine. If you want it square shaped, you leave it like that. But I'm going to leave this shaped like this. Now that's all the categories that we have for the header button. Click on publish. When you click on publish, click on this icon to go back by one step. And finally, under header, we have menu. Now let's click on menu. Now just to mention where the menu is at in the header, the menu is this section that you have all of these home about practice areas, blog, FAQs and contact. All of them together is called menu. Now individually they are called menu items. So primary menu is this. We don't have to change anything here. Click on this icon to go back by one step. Now for the primary menu colon menu item, if I click on it, you see that I have the first category here, which is active menu item style. We have that selected as none and that's okay. Now we have another category here, which is the colors category. Now for the menu item, remember I said that all of them together is called menu, but individually they are called menu items. So this category controls the color for the menu items. So let's click on this icon to edit to edit the color of the menu items. So I'll click that and you see that we have three states here. Now we have the normal state, we have the hover state and we have the active state. By now we know what a normal state is and a hover state. Now an active state is when any of these menu items here is active. Currently, home is active because we are on the home page. So if I click on about and we go to the about page, about becomes the active link. As you can see here, all of these items have a different color from the home item. And that's because the home item is the active item currently. So that's why we have three states here. So we are going to do our color settings for these three states. So for the normal state, I want the menu items to take this shade of yellow, just like that. And for the hover state, I want them to take that shade of green that we used for the hover effect on this button. And for the active state, I want the color to be this shade of yellow, which is a lighter shade of yellow. And that's that. I'll close this. And that's all for the colors category. Let's move over to the next category, which is the typography category. Now, if I come here and I click on this icon right in front of primary menu, you'd see that the font family currently is set to Lato. So I can change that to Poppins just like this. And I'm okay with the font weight and the font size. So I'll click on this X here to exit. And that's that for the typography category. So we are done with this. I'll click on publish like this. 
and click on this icon to go back by one step. Now that was for the primary menu colon menu item. Let's come here, click on primary menu colon drop down item. Now for the drop down, I would click on this icon here and I would set the font family for a drop down to poppins just like what we have. And that's all. I would click on this X sign and I would click on publish. Then click on this icon to go back. So for the mobile menu, we are going to change the typography to poppins also. And that's all for the mobile menu. Click on publish and click on the icon to go back by one step. Click on the icon again to go back by one step. And now since we are done with the header now, I'll click on the icon now to go back again by one step. Now let's come here. Let's reload our website to see all the changes that we made. So I'll reload this page to see that. And here it is. Our WordPress website is becoming a customized WordPress website to suit our own taste. So, so far, we have seen how to customize the head and we have seen how to customize the header. Now, let's see how to customize the footer section of our website before we start customizing the body section of the website. Now, if you don't know what the body section of a website is, the body section of a website is all of this section here that contains information about the website. Now, the footer section is this section, which is at the bottom here. Now, the reason why I would advise you to edit the head, the header and the footer first before you work on the body is because the header and the footer are always the same on all pages. They don't change. So this is the home page. If I click on about the header section here and the footer section remains the same. If I come back here and I click on practice areas, you would see that the header section and the footer section remains the same. Now, since the header and the footer section are always going to remain the same across all pages it is wise to customize them first so that you get that out of the way so let's see how to edit and customize our footer section we are going to do that in our customized dashboard once more and by now i think we all know how to find ourselves here on the customized dashboard so to edit the footer is pretty easy come here click on footer see where my mouse is at when you click on footer click on footer widgets the first category here is enable footer widgets and that's turned on and that's okay leave it like that the next category is hide widget title we don't want that it's turned off we have another category which is the footer widget style I like this one that is selected. You can go around and play with all of this to see how you want it. Now, the next category here is the colors category. So what colors do we want for our footer? Let's go with the background color first. Click on this icon in front of background. So we are going to select the absolute black for the background color. And for the widget title, which is a text, the white color is okay because if you have a white text on a black background, it's going to sit very well. So the widget content, the color for that is set to white. And the widget content is all of this. All these writings here are the widget content. And it's good for them to be white. Now the widget link items are home, about, practice areas, down to contact. Now if I click on this icon here, you'd see that we have two states for that. We have the normal state, which is white. And we have the hover state, which currently is this shade of gold so i would make that this shade of yellow now if i hover you see it's that shade of yellow and that's okay so i would click on this x sign to close this and that's all for the colors category let's move over to the next category which is the border top category so currently the size is set to zero i would leave it like that and for the color which is black i'll leave it like that and that's all for the border top category now let's look at the next category which is the list item border bottom so i'll come here i'll bring it down to zero when i bring it up you would notice that these lines here are the affected lines if i take it down to zero the lines are gone if i bring it back up the lines are present so i don't want those lines i'll take them to zero to take those lines out and that's all for the list item border bottom. Finally, I would click on publish. Now, I would click on this icon to go back by one step. And I would click on footer bottom bar. Now, the footer bottom bar is this bottom section where you have copyright 2019 Zakra, Zakra by Thin Grill. 
first category in the footer bottom bar is the style category. I'll leave it like this. The next category is the left content, which is the copyright 2019 Zakra Atonal and all of that. So I would use my backspace to take this out and I would say copyright 2021 handlers just like that now we have another category here which is the right content i would come here click on this drop down and select none just like that so after the right content category we have the colors category now the background color is this shade of dark i'll change it to the complete shade of black so that it can be consistent with this black color here now the text color is set to this shade of dark i'll change it to white and it's okay and for the link here i'll change it to this shade of yellow and that's all so for the border top i would keep it at zero this is another category called the border top category i would keep it to zero and finally i would click on publish and after that's published i would go back i would click on this icon to go back and we have another item here which is called scroll to top now the scroll to top item is this square here with an arrow. If you click on it, you will be taken to the top of the page automatically. Now let's click on it to see what happens. You see that we are taken to the top of the page automatically. So I would leave that the way it is. If you want to edit that, come here, click on scroll to top, change the background color. If you click on background, you'd see that we have the normal and hover state. You set the colors for that. You can change the color of the icon also for normal and hover state. Now, if you don't want this icon, you can disable it by clicking on this toggle button here to disable it. As simple as that. So let's go back to this tab that we are using to test our website and let's reload the website to see what happens. So as you can see, the changes are evident in our footer section, just the same way it is evident in our header section. So let's click on home to go back to our home page. Now, there is one thing that we have not successfully done, which is to edit the content of our footer and the logo of our footer. Let's go back to our dashboard to see how we can do that. Now come here, click on this icon to go back by one step till you find yourself in the customized dashboard. So how do we change all this content to our own content? You would notice all these icons that are round with a pen inside of it or a pencil. When I click on this icon that is close to this logo, it means that I want to change this logo. So let's click on it to see what happens. So you can see that it says replace image. If I click on replace image, I can come here, click this and select it and click on add to widgets. You see that that's been changed. Now, if I want to change this text here, I would click on this icon close to the text. When I click on it, you would see that I have the text here. So I can bring my mouse here, select all of it and delete it and start typing my own text to show that works just like that. So the same thing is applicable for this, 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 and this. Now over here, I have a title bar, which is empty. I can say empty just like that. And I have a title here empty. Now, if I click on this icon close to practice areas, you'd see that the title is practice areas and the content after the title is all of this. So you can change the title and the content. That's pretty easy. So let's click on publish to publish our changes. Now, before we start editing the body of our website, I would like to show how to create a drop down menu item. Now, if you want to know how to create menus from scratch, how to coordinate and manage menus like a pro, I would make a short video for that. And the link to that video will be in the description. But for now, let's see how to create a drop down menu. To do that, come here, click on this X sign here to go back to the main dashboard. Now, when you find yourself here, come here, hover on appearance and select menus. Now, when you select menus, you would see that we have this message that says select a menu to edit. Currently, the selected menu is the primary menu and that's the menu we are working with. So if I scroll down, you would see this section that says menu structure. Now, this is how our menu currently is structured. Remember, I told you that all of these links here 
there together are called a menu now individually they are called menu items so what we have here is our menu structure now this is how our menu is structured it has home first followed by about followed by practice areas down to contact if you come here you would see that that's exactly how it is structured now let's go straight to the business of the day which is to create a drop down menu item so let's say i want to create a drop down for about and i want faqs to stay under about as a drop down i would click on faqs and hold it and i'll drag it out and i'll bring it up here place it right under about like this not like this not directly under about but like this now when i drop it i would come down here i would click on save menu now when i click on save menu and the menu is saved if i come back here to my website and i reload my website you'd see that about now has a drop down icon right in front of it now if i keep my mouse on top of about you see that we have faqs right there now this is the way to create a menu drop down item so like i said before now if you want to master menus in wordpress i have a link to that video in the description now we have one bug that we have not handled over here i can see let's go back to our wordpress dashboard under appearance let's click on customize and in customize let's click on header now let's go to site identity and let's see what's happening there let's uncheck display site title and tagline uncheck it and let's click on publish now let's go back to our website let's reload our website to see what happens so those two handlers are not showing anymore so let's click on x here to go back to our wordpress dashboard from there, we can know what to do next. So the next thing to do is to see how we can edit the body of our website, which is all of this, using Elementor. Now, Elementor is, is a popular WordPress theme builder. Now, in this case, you don't need to worry about installing Elementor, configuring Elementor, or having to know the settings for Elementor. You don't need all of that because while we were importing the zakra demo templates it automatically imported elementor for us so all we need to do is just use elementor and that's pretty easy so to use elementor when you launch your website in the browser while you are logged into your wordpress dashboard you would see this link here that says edit with elementor now i would open a new tab and i'll type in handlers.com we are still going to have that link there that says edit with Elementor. So to edit the body section of the website with Elementor, just click on edit with Elementor. Now, when I click on that, it's going to take me to the Elementor editor. And here it is. Now let's understand Elementor. Elementor is a WordPress builder that understands web pages as sections and subsections. So over here, you can see that we have this main section. If I keep my mouse on top of this X sign, you see it says delete section, edit section, add section. If I keep my mouse here, you see it says delete inner section, edit inner section. So Elementor is just section by section. So what we are going to do in this video, we are going to see how to edit basically with Elementor. So for now, let's delete all of these sections. That's what I'm doing actually. Sorry for not mentioning that. I'm deleting all these sections. I want to have just two sections to work with. So if I want to delete a section like this that does not have that X sign, I would click on the subsection, come here, Come here and find this icon, right click on the icon and select delete. Now even for this, I'll delete that one, I'll delete this one and even this one, I'll delete this section too, that one, that one. So I'll delete all of these sections just so that we have two sections to work with. So we have this section and this section to work with. And since I have deleted all other sections, I would come here and I would click on update. Now the update button here is similar to the publish button in our WordPress customized dashboard. So I would click on update. When I click on update and I go back to our website, when I reload the website, you would see that we just have only this. So let's see how to edit this section here. I would come here in the Elementor editor. I would go with the first section i would come here click on this icon that says edit section when i click on it you'd see that we have three categories here under edit section we have the layout category we have the style category and 
the advanced category so for the layout i'll let it be like this but for the style category i'll take out this image by clicking on choose image and let's say i want to have another image as my background image let's say i want to have this one here i'll click on it to select it and click on insert media now after that i'll scroll down still under style i would come here under background overlay i would add some opacity to this point i would click on update so the next set of things we have to edit are this content here so for this one here that says you are built for change i would click on it and i can change the writing here to say change is built for us and i can click on style here and change the font family from default to poppins the text color is okay for me it's white and the alignment is okay for me it's aligned to the left now this little line here if i don't want it i can come here right click on it and delete it just like that now for this section that says we are in this together click on it when you click on it look over here on the left side you would see the content now i can take all of this out and say this is my day and that's all now for this section here where we have all of this text you can highlight all of them delete all of them and write yours now for the button here click on the button then you would see the text of the button which is read more you can change yours to buy now just like this then for the style here i would select the typography to poppins just like that you can increase the size here if you want and let's look at the color of this button let's change it from this to to this shade of yellow just like this and that's all for this button and for the button, I'd click on advanced, I'd click on motion effects, I'd select rubber band, just like this. Now you can add animations for this one. Just click on any item you want to add an animation effect to, click on it, go to advanced, click on motion effects, then click on bouncing up, just like this. Now you can make it slow and not normal, and you can reduce the speed by 900 milliseconds, just like that. Now you can add animations for this also if you want to add, but if you don't want to add, okay. Now, what we have here is we have four categories. So let's see how to delete one. I can come here, right click on it and select delete. Now take note of where I am right clicking on. I'm right clicking on this space here, not this space, this one here. Now when I right click on it, I would select delete and that section is gone completely. Now we have three sections. So I can come here, click on this one, select the view as stacked to have that as stacked just like that. So you can come over here still and change the content of this. You can call it business policy. Then you can change the color of this circle here. Come under style to change that. Select something yellow just like this. And click here also. Select something yellow just like this. Click here also. Select something yellow just like this. So you can see that this is making the job really easy. Now, if I want to change this icon, I'll just click on this page here come under content and when i hover my mouse here on this icon you'd see that i have two options that i can use to change this icon the first option is for me to go to the elementor icon library which is free which is free i can come here and select any icon i want to replace the existing one the second option is to upload an icon from my own computer by clicking on upload svg just like this now I can upload any icon I have in my computer. I'll just click on upload files, click on select files, and I'm going to upload it. That's all. So for this text here, you can change it here, just like this. And if you want animation for this card, come here, click on advanced, click on motion effects, and select flash, just like this. So let's go back to the homepage of our website. Let's reload it to see the changes. You can see that there is significant change here but we don't have all of this update here. And why is that? It's like that because we have not clicked on update. So let's click on update. Now let's reload our website again. We have all of these changes here, plus the animations. Now this is how easy it can be to edit a simple landing page website using WordPress, as simple as this. So in the description, I'll drop links to more complex WordPress videos. We are going to see how to create pages and edit the pages from scratch using Elementor, building our own blocks. We are also going to see how to make forms work, 
on WordPress websites. We are going to see how to build an e-commerce store using WordPress. We are going to talk about plugins and see which plugins are very necessary for our WordPress websites. So for now, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any issues, say them in the comment section and don't forget to share this video.